think there's such a curiosity generated in the community about the Carmelite nuns? Well I think the first thing is that we're leading a hidden life and the fact that we're a pair and uh, the enclosure wall goes right around the property and um, when people come to the turnstile to, uh, with messages or anything like that they hear the voice comes through the turnstile, it's very mysterious and naturally if you find, come in contact with a mystery you want to know what's behind that mystery. Sister Dorothea, explain what the Carmelite Order is. Uh, we're, we're, well, it's, that's quite a big question, but we're an uh, order that's dedicated to seeking union with God. That's our main reason d'etre, that's our whole purpose of life here. Uh, and, but that's, that's, our, that's our focus. To do that, we live in community life. We live a life that is very balanced with, with prayer and with our, uh, with our study, with reading and with our recreation times together uh, and that's all, it's a community life which is focused on that great quest for seeking God and that explains, as Sister said, uh, the mysteriousness of the life because we are, we've literally created deserts in the city, uh, like the old desert hermits used to go out into the city uh, sorry, into the deserts, but we we stayed. Our founders wanted us to stay in the cities, close to people, but maintaining a distance and a separation that would help us to to pray and to, without the distractions of of well, literally the world and people. But of course, that doesn't mean we're cut off from people. We're very much involved with people, but in a measured way, in a way that's um, that's compatible with our life. I'll be quite frank, Sister Teresa, how long have you been behind bars? 63 years, and I'm still loving it, I <laughs> They've gone quite quickly, really. Though I look back, it's quite a long stretch of time. It's been some people's lifetime, but uh, 63 years, and uh, they've been very happy years, as you'd imagine, very fulfilled years, and I wouldn't be anywhere else, there's no doubt about that. I've tested and tried most things. <laughs> Describe your relationship with God. It's something very deep, and it is my whole life. And I've always had the relationship with God, but time was a small child. I was brought up in a Catholic family. My parents were very faith-filled uh, people, and I've always wanted to be a nun from the age of six. My first experience of God was as a very small child, kneeling beside my mother in church on Sunday at Mass. And when she came back after receiving a Holy Communion, uh, she'd uh, bow her head down and put her face in her hands there and pray deeply. And I used to feel something coming from her into me. I knew there was something sacred and special. She'd been up to Communion, I was too young to go. And there she was, deep in prayer. And I felt there was a tangible connection with what was going on inside my mother. So that was my first deeply spiritual experience. Now, Sister Dorothea, I can't believe I'm asking this question, but tell me how in 1973, a certain concert in Narawahia <laughs> could take you on a new path. Explain that. Well, it was, it, was a, it was a momentous moment of my life that completely turned me around and changed me. I was 19 at the time, Black Sabbath were um, playing and the music was just absolutely filling the valley, it was just wonderful. And we were all in tents and it was, you know, what the place is like, Narawah has beautiful hills and it's a lovely place. And it was, it was the concert, we went to the concert that night and I remember getting quite close to the stage and all of a sudden something started to happen within me. There was a burning cross on the hill. There was, everything was just sort of set up to have a good night. But 
it was that cross on the hill that was really flaming out and something happened inside me, I can't say exactly what it was, but it was just my whole life started to, 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 started to show itself to me and I suddenly saw all from when I was quite a young child um, where my path had gone which was um, very ambitious for studies, for um, for relationships and for, well, it kept coming to me that my whole life had been a big lie and it was just, just pounding inside me just, and, and suddenly I just started to quite freak out and I had to get away from the music and I had to get away from what was happening and I just had to be, but I needed someone around me because I was, I was really panicking. So I had friends there that uh, well, flatmates actually, and they um, took me by the hand each side and just led me away from the from the music. And I remember we were sitting outside the tent, and at that stage, um, I'd been one of those flatmates had sort of been talking a wee bit about Buddhism. We were talking about that a bit at, at nights, and I remember, um, I remember it starting to dawn on me that there was more than just. I didn't believe in God at all, and I, I suddenly realised it was more than just what I could see. That there was something actually in something inside that we could, there could have been a search there. So it was actually something started sort of, I kept saying to this that man, I said, you know, what you're talking about is starting to come, it's all sort of starting to happen. And then I saw a dog um, and he, he came close to the tent and he started vomiting and I said, that's a symbol of my life. Suddenly everything's coming out of me that had happened in my life and and so these flatmates they actually were very heroic because they missed their Saturday night concert to look after me and I went to sleep that night and I remember waking up in the morning and I was looking at our through the sun was coming through the tent and I heard a blackbird sing and I remember waking up and thinking there was such a peace inside me there was it was like the first morning I'd ever lived and I was back to work like I was a seven-year-old child the euphoria in my heart was just amazing and I, I just I just totally changed from that night suddenly I, and I just gave up everything studies <laughs> everything and just just uh, really literally wandered the North Island I, I just put a, took a few possessions in my pack took a sleeping bag and and just left all my securities you might say because I'd suddenly found something inside that piece that was past everything I could ever explain and it was that night that it that it all happened Sister Kushla how did you become a Carmelite nun well um when I was growing up, I felt this, this kind of deep sense of God and this deep wanting to be with Him, but I had a great struggle because I wanted to marry and have a big family. And so over the years, there was, there was a struggle in me. And when I was about 16, I came along to do a school project on the Carmelites. And actually, Sister Teresa, I, <laughs> I interviewed her. And um, there was something in me that there's something there that was very, very attractive, but also something I didn't want. So over from when I was 20, 16 to 28, I had this big, big struggle within me. And then when I was, so I was, I was getting on, I was about 27 and I said, Lord, what do you want? And I said, you know, I want to sign, I want to know. And so I, I prayed very deeply for this and uh, I got my sign. I, one night, I, one evening I was at church and I just, when I went to that church, I wanted to get married and have a family and when I walked out I knew I had to try the Carmelite so I, I actually spoke to a priest that I knew and he told me all the negatives <laughs> and then he got me an interview with Sister Dorothea actually and I came out and that was um, 12 years ago and so each month I came out to visit and talk with uh, Sister Teresa, she was in charge of the formation at that time so that was, I came out for about was it nine months? And then I actually came for a week, what they call a live-in. Usually it's up to three months to, if someone's a very genuine, seriously, they think they have a vocation, they can come to, for up to three months. And so the community can look at you and you can look at the community. And then, so at the end of that week, I just knew that this is where I wanted to be. So I said, let me in. <laughs> but I wrote a, a, a letter and, and eventually they, they answered. <laughs> it was a while. And then I, um, came to Carmel on, in January 1999 so but that doesn't mean I automatically become a Carmelite because for that first six years um, you're discerning is this where God wants me to be because you don't want to make any mistakes mm -hmm. I mean, 
so um, so they were looking at me and I was looking at the community and it was just, and there was ups and downs, but that moment that I said yes for life, which is when we received the black veil, I just, you know, yeah. Is there anything you do miss that you can't partake in anymore? I don't, I don't find there is anything for me. Um, no, there were some things at the very start which is difficult to give up, just even that the spontaneity of being able to do um, what you want, when you want, and, <laughs> and sleep in and go down and get um, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken or something like that. <laughs> we don't eat meat. <laughs> um, but so those things at the start, I missed that, but they were very, and I missed my family of course at the start, um, very badly, you know, my nephews and niece, my, my mum and brothers and sisters, but um, that's, you know, the, the relationship with them has actually deepened, I only see them once a month, but it's, it's deepened. But no, there's nothing else. I, I find everything I, I need, I mean, some things I may want, but everything I need is here.